Welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple way to organize all of your tax documents. It's totally free to do. It's easy. It's something that I found to be extremely useful this time of year when I'm wishing I had done a better job organizing all of my files over the past year. So uh, let me show you how I used to do it, and then I'm going to show you, I think, a better way and something that you might try. So you're looking at the screen. This is just a Dropbox. And uh, as an example, uh, for 2021, I uh, this is how I used to organize all my tax documents. I would have, of course, a folder like this. And if we opened it up, the way I did it, I had a folder for income and for deductions. And if you open these folders up, I sort of separated in between my job and any 1099 income I'd made from maybe freelancing. And then I had banks. Uh, and those would be like statements, uh, 1099 interest statements, so uh, for my savings accounts, and then investment accounts. And uh, if there was anything else, of course, I had other subfolders, but this was basically how I organized it. And these are all empty, but in each one of these, of course, there would be PDFs of all of the relevant documents. And basically the same idea for deductions. In Virginia, we have car taxes we have to pay, so I had a folder for that, charitable contributions, uh, when we had a mortgage, we don't anymore, but when we had a mortgage, of course, our, our 1098, I think it's a 1098 from the mortgage company, uh, you might also have in here student loans, uh, state and local taxes if you itemize. So this was sort of how I organized them. But the problem was a couple of fold. One is it, it was difficult to sort of see all of this at sort of a bird's eye view. I had to sort of dive in and drill down into each folder. And then there was always the question, what am I missing? And you know, I, I, you know, I'd go jump from folder to folder. Do I have everything? Have I downloaded everything? So I don't bother with this anymore. In fact, now my tax document folder is just one folder. I don't, I don't have all of these subfolders. So if we were to look at 2020, now I've only, for the purposes of this video, I've only got two documents in here, and they are my W-2s from Forbes. There were two different companies, but, but from Forbes. And um, but of course, uh, for my actual 2020 tax document folder, I have everything in here from the banks, from investments, uh, all the documents related to our deductions. And it just I just dump it into one folder, which actually seems like I'm going backward. Right. This is worse than than the way I used to do it. But then here's what I do. I create a document like what you see here. Uh, and this is just a Google Doc. And in fact, I'll make this available. You can uh, create a copy of this if you'd like. It's a very simple document, though. It's easy to create from scratch. But um, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you just click File, make a copy, you can make a copy of it. You won't be able to edit this, uh, but you can make a copy and then edit it if you want. But what I did was I laid out all of our income and deductions and any other uh, events relevant to our taxes. And these, of course, are just high, uh, examples. But uh, and then what I did was, from an organizational perspective, you'll see that I've, there's this table of contents here. So if the document gets long, as it will for some folks that have more complicated taxes, you can easily jump from one part of the document to the other. And the way I do that is for each of these, like for income, if I highlight it, we come over here. You can see I gave it a heading two, um, and then. Uh, within each type of income, this would be a heading three. And that's what creates these, uh, this table of contents over here. And so what I've done is uh, just laid out all of the different uh, documents that I'll need for our income, from our deductions and any other special situations, like for example, the purchase and sale of real estate. And what you'll find is after you go through this once, you'll have everything laid out. You'll have, for example, you know, all of your jobs, if, if you're married, your spouse's job, uh, all everywhere where you bank and you're expecting an interest statement, you'll have all of your investments and likewise, all of your different deductions. And once you've done it through the first year, you have it there. And so for the f next year, you can simply copy it over. You know, there might be some changes from year to year, but by and large, uh, it, at least for us, it stays more or less the same. But here's the what where I find it to be extremely helpful is I then link uh, each of these to the file in Dropbox. So for example, pulling up Dropbox again, uh, we'll take a Forbes Media. I can uh, right click on this and get copy Dropbox link. And then here, and I'll just change this for a moment. Let's say this were Forbes Media LLC. 
what I could do is simply come here and uh, create a link. I just command K creates a link. I can paste it in. And now I have a link to that Dropbox file that would show me um, uh, the W2. And this kind of serves as two purposes. First of all, it obviously gives me easy access to the file. But the second thing it does, it sort of acts as a checklist. So I can quickly look at this. And for each item that has a link, I know I've got the document. And I know it's in Dropbox. And I know with just a, a click, I can go look at the PDF. Um, so it, it, this functions as a checklist at the same time. And it, it allows me very quickly, rather than jumping from folder to folder and drilling down into a, a folder system, I can, at a high level, look at all of the documents I'm going to need for our taxes. I'll know instantly which ones I have, which ones I'm perhaps still waiting for. The other thing this allows me to do is throughout the year, uh, save files that I know I'll need. So a lot of the documents you get at the end of the year, like your, your, your W-2s and so forth. But there are some things you get throughout the year, for example, charitable contributions. So if, if we uh, get a receipt for some charitable contribution that we made, I can put it in the Dropbox file for that tax year and then immediately link it here is in this example. And so I have it. I'm not sort of hunting around for all of this at tax time. The same would be really useful if you are in a situation where you can deduct medical expenses, because in that case, you could have a lot of paperwork to, to, to maintain and keep track of. And waiting to the end of the year just creates all kinds of stress, anxiety. Did you get everything? Did you, did you lose something? But if you get it scanned and into Dropbox and then linked to your tax organize, organizer document, you have it all in one place. And the last thing is you can even share this with your tax preparer if you want to. It's very easy to share a Google Doc. Now, they may have their own sort of proprietary portal where they want you to upload documents. That may be. But um, if not, you could just share this document once it's done and linked to, and they could have easy access uh, to all of your relevant tax documents. So that's it. Very simple. Uh, but I found this to be a great way to maintain my tax documents that come in throughout the year and then to pull together all of the tax documents that come in in, in January of every year. Uh, it serves as a checklist. I have links to, the, to each document in Dropbox so I can access them very easily. If I'm going to do my own taxes, I'm ready to go. Here they are. I've got everything. If I'm going to get some help, I can share this with the tax preparer and they have everything they need. Again, I'll leave a link to this document if you want to use it. Again, very simple to create from scratch, but you're welcome to make a copy of it and use it for yourself if that is helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.